Hi and welcome to another C programming tutorial. In today's class we're going to talk about bitwise operators. Now bitwise operators we tend to use in most of the cases when we work with microcontrollers and we need to do some sort of bit manipulation in order to get some sort of output. So the we get the following bitwise operators. We've got bitwise and, we've got bitwise or, bitwise xor, that's the small hat there. We've got the squiggly line for bitwise not, and then we've got left shift and right shift. So let's assume you've got two variables, a that's equal to 5 in decimal. If we convert a into binary, we will be left with four zeros and then zero one zero one and that would be the same for b if b is equal to nine in decimal we will have um, four zeros and one zero zero one so we need to understand a little bit about binary in terms or how to convert decimal to binary to understand how to work with bitwise operators so let's look at the following examples so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go and create an unsigned char. And the reason why I create an unsigned char is because an unsigned char in C programming is going to be 8 bits long. Oops. And then I'm going to create another one. And that would be for B. And as we see now with um, characters, we can also put in values in characters. So we can use character as a value, but we can also use it as a physical ASCII character. So we can play around with that as well. So that's not going to make a big difference. So if we go further, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create um, the following yeah so i'm going to say print f and inside this print if let's zoom in a little bit in this print f what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say a is equal to percentage d so i want to display a decimal value there and then b is equal to a percentage d and i'm going to add a new line and I'm just going to output the values of A and B. So let's quickly just see. Um, and let's call this output. Um, or values. Values of A and B. So let's first, before we start off with the examples, let's see what will happen and check if everything works. So we've got A is equal to 5 and B is equal, equal to 9. Now if we go further, what I'm going to do now is we're going to play around with each of the bitwise operators. So I'm just going to say the result here for each and let's say the result is, let's say is equal to and then we're going to do bitwise operator. Okay, so the first bitwise operator that we're going to do is the bitwise OR. So A and B, uh, and then we display what's going to be A and B. So we've got A and B. So now we are using bitwise AND on the values A and B. Let's see uh, what would be the result. So if we run this. A and B will give us A is equal to 5 and B is equal to 9. And if we add 5 and 9, we get 1. So let's go and quickly check if this makes any sense. So we've got 0, 0, 0. That's our four zeros. The same for 9. And then if we um, go and add this, this would mean... Um, if we look at AND, if it's a 0 and a 0, it's a 0. If it's a 0 and a 1, it's a 0. And if it's a 1 and a 0, it's a 0. So that's the truth table of the AND 
um, bitwise operator. So then we would be left with zero and a zero, 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 and then a zero and a one still gives us a zero. Uh, one and a zero is a zero, zero, and then only for a one and a one we have a one. So as we can see from the binary, that would be then one in decimal. So yes, that makes perfect sense. So the result is one. So we are, uh, we can see that that is perfect. So now we can go and run a little bit with all the other operators. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy and paste this a few times here so that we can play around with the next ones. So the next one that we have is A and B. And let's see what is the result. Just add some nice little spaces there. So A or B, and then we use the OR bitwise operator. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do um, XOR, that would be the hat and then uh, before we get to these ones let's just stop there so let's quickly go and determine by hand what would be the result of a or b so again what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do it here so the truth table for or would be zero and a zero is a zero and one and a zero or zero and a one is going to be one and one and a one is going to be basically a one so zero 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 so if we or this bit with this bit we get zero the same for this one etc so now a zero and a one would give us a one one zero and a one okay and what would that value then be so if we take a look at this binary value and we look at um, it in decimal you can do your conversions by hand or with a calculator you would find that the value is going to be 13 so oops let's just copy and paste that there so our output is going to be, oops, there we are. So that's going to be equal to one in decimal, and that would be equal to then 13. So let's quickly do the XOR and see what will happen. So if we go up again, XOR is zero and a zero is a zero and a one and a one is a zero and then for zero one and one zero we are left with a one so zero 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 then we've got one one and then zero zero so now you can see it's just the least significant bit is one less than our previous answer and that, that this will give us basically uh, this one then notes that it's uh, basically um, a four, and then we've got eight there, so eight plus four gives us 12. So that would be our answer, technically, according to our calculations for the XOR. So if we run this, let's see if we get 12. So we've got a few new lines just missing here, otherwise our output is going to be all on one line so let's see what will happen so now I'm running this and you will see that a and B will give us one a or B will will be 13 and a X or B will be 12 and we can see that our output makes perfect sense and now you can go on uh, with all these other um, operators we've got the bitwise not the bitwise not would be then um, just inverse a single um, value. So if we work, for instance, with 
just the um, A. So let's just do that again. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to not with the squiggly line and that would be then the following just not a and if we have um, basically a five everything else will be um, then not okay so um, if we look at the not basically this would be a one 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 just for a okay so remember this is now now not there so let's just do it at the top maybe it's maybe going to be so we not the first one um this one then um we have uh, one not zeros one not zeros again a one one not one is a zero then one and zero and that will be then um, our output for the knot okay and now you will see that that's not going to be um, what we expect it to be just in basic binary um, so that would be the result was one two three four and then um, it was uh, that was just now quickly think yeah so five Yes. Okay. So that is going to be our result. So let's quickly go and have a look at what's going to be our result. And I know this already, um, but it's going to be negative because the last digit denotes that we have a negative. So just going to make sure that you understand how the knot works and also how negative um, binary values also work. So then if we go on to one that's very popular and um, uh, broadly used in uh, microcontrollers when we do a few bit manipulation and play around with um, for instance um, analog to digital converters where we have for instance maybe a 10-bit ADC and we're working in an 8-bit microcontroller and then we need to sometimes shift values um, into um, another register so that we are able to see what's the value of this 8-bit or this 10-bit ADC because now remember if we're working on an 8-bit system um, or a system that has a 8-bit data bus then we can only work with 8 bits and our analog to digital converter converts our analog signal for us into 10 bits now we've got those two bits so what do we do with those oh, yeah four yeah two bits sorry two bits and what do we how do we get that two bits and we tend to play around with um, left shift and right shift quite a lot also um, in an 8-bit microcontroller we've got two registers associated with a um, adc in most cases and you can also um, set a parameter or set a register in this microcontroller to say the ADC output needs to be left justified or right justified meaning that the if it's right justified the eight least significant bits are going to be stored um, in the right um, the register on the right and then the two most significant bits on the left and vice versa if it's left justified so if it's left justified eight most significant bits on the left and then two least significant bits on the right so it makes it a little bit uh, it makes it a bit tricky to play around with that so um, let's see what will happen when we do shifts so um, what I'm going to do I'm going to still have this the result result and let's go and play with for instance 9 so 9 is going to be this so I'm just going to put 9 there for now it's not the result so what are we going to do is I'm going to do a left shift 
with B and then I'm going to do the same and then do a right shift and we're just going to do a right shift now this uh, parameter there is basically we are telling the shift how many bits do we want to shift left and right okay so let's quickly see what will happen if we do a left shift with one so we just need to take this all away and that would be then exactly that and then we will have this okay so let's see what would be our output so if we run it we will get four and then 18 so let's quickly go and have a look so let's look at the first one the right shift oh sorry the left shift with one what will happen here is basically we're going to shift this bit to this one there okay so technically this whole thing shifts so zero shifts to the nine but there is no nine so we just lose it zero shifts to this one this bit shifts to the next one this one to the next one so shift one from there to there and then zero to there and then this zero to there and then this one will be shifted there and we just shift in a zero oh sh shucks i'm just working on the wrong one here sorry there we go I was working on the wrong one so if we will have a zero there and then one would move there and then we have a, a zero and a one so our value um, if we look at that one moves one up and then we shift in a zero so then a zero would be there so that is why we have 18 so why 18 um, that's just this is the fifth bit so that's um, 2 to the power of 4 so 2 times 2 gives us 4 then two, 4 times 2 gives us 8 and then 8 times 2 gives us 16 plus this 2 is 18 so we can see that that is correct so now the right shift one bit right shift so basically we are shifting in a zero from the left so everything here will stay the same but this zero moves now there and this one moves there so technically we've got that and then we lose that last one and then what we would be left with is then this so one two and that's three so that is then exactly what we thought it was going to be that's going to be four so two to the power of four and then our uh, is four yeah so our answer looks exactly like we thought it's going to be so left shift right shift very very popular when we work with microcontrollers we cannot um the whole um variable basically and we can do x or or and and so that is basically bitwise operator. We use it on binary values of variables. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time.